Hey everyone, it is that time again. It is power hour. Well, so I'm so glad that you could join me here in the cabin. And um, you know, the Lord gave me a word specifically for you today. So I'm excited to be able to share it. Please do go ahead and let me know where you are watching from. I know here on Power Hour, we often have people watching from all over the world. And we are just so excited to be able to connect with you uh, virtually. You know, this morning, our team just put together our European tour uh, recap. Kept. They did a recap video and I went through and I was watching all the places that we went to with highlights from all the different different countries that we ministered to in March. And it was so fun to be able to see people's faces in the crowd, people that we'd met. Some of you were there in the crowd in the different countries through Europe. And it was just fun to be able to rehearse those things and to, and to listen again to the testimonies that came forward from that trip. So you're going to be able to see that really soon. They're going to be putting that out um, via email and different places you'll see it on their different media channels. But look for yourself. You might be able to see yourself on some of those recap videos. So who have we got on here? We've got Ashley's mum on here. She's in Spain. We've got Christina on here from Florida. We've got Lisa from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Andrew's in Paris. Oh, I love this. People are everywhere. Awesome. Yes, yeah, Solly Hole. Joan's in the Solly Hole, the UK. And we had a great time actually in the UK, in Walsall and in, uh, in, in Guildford, just by London down there. And so that was, that was super fun. And we're actually going to be over in the UK again in May uh, with Andrew Womack. And Mark's on here. And um, carry on get, letting me know where you're watching from. I'll give you a shout out. Uh, we've got people from Texas and California. Um, more people from Texas, Brownsville. Texas is a really big place, you know, that's why. Uh, I heard a statistic actually. Um, you know, we're from England and it's a tiny, tiny place. But uh, it takes so long for us to drive through Texas. I mean, we, um, where, 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 where were we? We were like maybe somewhere in the middle of Texas. And it took us 14 hours just to drive to get out of the state. And I started to think about when we lived in England, it, you know, you can get from one side of England to the other in four hours. Four hours, that's how much tinier it is. I forget now how many times England fits into Texas, but it's a lot, anyway. Netherlands, come on, we were just in the Netherlands. Uh, Corbin's here from Georgia. Joy's from Sebastian, Florida, Fort Worth. Uh, we've got Virgin uh, LMs from Virginia. Kirsten's on here. Man, it's exciting. Joining in from all over the place. Um, we've got somebody from a country that put their flag on there. I'm not sure what country that is. Oh, Pakistan. That's awesome. People are literally everywhere. Texas is huge. It is true. It is huge. Now, listen, while we're all joining in, this is exciting. Um, last week's winner, let me get this up. Last week's winner is, okay, da -da -da, drum roll, please. That's my drum roll. Um, last time I gave away All Is Not Lost. Now you may have realized the last time I was actually live on Power Hours two weeks ago because last week we actually premiered the testimony of my healing um, from epilepsy and different things. And, um, and so we gave away, we gave away this book, All Is Not Lost, which talks about that. And so the Power Hour winner from last week is Rebecca Silver from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Rebecca Silva, if you're on here, congratulations, you are the winner. I'm gonna sign this copy and we're gonna get that sent out to you. You are the winner of my book, All Is Not Lost from uh, last week and the week before. But this week, this week, we're gonna be giving away, actually, everybody is going to be able to get this and I'm gonna give you a code in order to get this, this product. Oh, we've got more people joining in. Kirsten is from a German-speaking congregation in Scotland. Hungary, we've got here Amarillo, Texas. Uh, very good. But this week, this teaching is called Against All Odds. This is actually the CD version of this, um, but we have a download version as well. And this is really talking about how to walk in victory. So, in, and it doesn't matter what area of your life we are talking about. This is gonna be for everybody. So I would encourage you, go ahead and press share. Some people are already on here. Joy already knows, she has shared already, look at that. Um, if you press, press, please go ahead and press share if you're on Facebook, like and subscribe if you are on Facebook. Code for the download that's gonna be out at the end of the program. So please remind me, if I forget, listen, somebody on here take notes for me and let me know, I've gotta give away the, the, the access code, all right? Otherwise no one will be able to get it. But there is a secret code and you're gonna be able to uh, download that, amen, as our gift. And it's, there is actually, I think, like five hours on here. Five, it's a five lesson series. 
five lesson series. So I don't know if it's actually five hours, but it's definitely five programs that are on here. So you'll be able to get that and that'll bless you. If you're going through a challenge and you need to see some, some victory, make sure you get your copy of Against All Odds. It is going to bless you. Amen. Oh, Simi's on here from Trinidad. That's awesome. We have Deborah from Shreveport. Uh, yes, Rebecca Silva is our winner. Amen. Awesome stuff. Okay, what else is going on? Oh, yes, before I get into the teaching today, and I'm going to be praying for your prayer requests, make sure that I don't forget this. Um, but, uh, you know, we don't put your prayer requests in right now because we, otherwise they're going to just bubble along on the comments there. And then I'll, I won't be, able to, won't be able to find them. Thank you. It is our wedding anniversary today. People are saying congratulations. Ashley and I have been married 26 years today. 26 years today. So I'm, I'm believing for a nice dinner tonight, honey, if you're watching, by the way. I'm not cooking tonight, right? <laughs> it's our anniversary. I'm not cooking. I'm signing off. I'm going out for dinner somewhere. Somewhere better than McDonald's, preferably, right? Okay. So I mustn't forget this. Boot camp. I know we've got some, several of our boot camp leaders on here um, from different places around the world. Boot camp is starting up again. Boot camp is our small group, Zoom small groups. 12 people in a group for 12 weeks, one hour a week, and it's a discipleship empowerment, um, really a small group. And so if you want to be able to take the word of God and become confident in what you believe, in how to lead someone in salvation, in how to, 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 to use spiritual gifts, in how to pray for the sick, in how to, to lead someone in key subjects, tenets of our faith, then boot camp is for you. It's really going to help you. And it's free as well. And um, our partners make this available to you. Thank you, partners. So make sure you sign up for the next round of boot camp. We only do this once a year. And the next round is starting on June the 1st. So you have a little bit of time to get your application in. You have to apply for it. And you can do that, terrydays.com forward slash boot camp. So make sure you do that. Ready for June the 1st. I know many people have already signed up. And we've got people on here. Uh, well, I see some of our boot camp leaders on here, actually. Yes, Stephanie's on here. She's a former boot camp leader. Everyone needs to go through it. I agree. It's going to be really good for you. It really helps you to understand, um, you know, what you believe on the inside and then come to the point where you feel confident enough to share it with the people around you. So that's coming up soon. Um, it's not going to cost you anything. And so you're going to want to make sure you do that. Now, we've got a couple of things coming up in April already. Um, the 20th, um, the weekend of the 20th of April, we're going to be in Florida. And so we've got a couple of different events there in Florida. One is there in um, just outside of Orlando at Karos Bible College, which they're opening up um, for visitors as well on a Saturday morning. Ash and I are going to be speaking there. And then on Saturday evening and Sunday morning, uh, we're going to be over in Eustace, Florida at Lake Haven Church. So make sure you, you head on over there if you're in the Florida area. We'd love to be able to see you. And then, of course, on April the 25th through the 27th there, we have The Cure, our annual healing conference. And we are so excited. Our team is in the throes of preparations for this. As we speak, we have, we have all kinds of things going on, all kinds of things arriving in the office. The excitement is building. You know, we have been praying for you. We have been um, just in, uh, interceding. We, have, we are believing God for your miracles. Amen. And so I would encourage you to register and attend in person it's here in Woodland Park Colorado but if you are out somewhere out far flung parts of the world and you cannot make it to Woodland Park Colorado make sure you register and attend the live stream and um, I think we're going to have some special things going on some people getting together and watching it together um, in South Africa as well just talking to our South African director today about that so you know it's going to go all over the world it's going to be on Thursday night, Friday night, and it's going to be Saturday during the day, right? So there's definitely something um, something for everybody at The Cure, but obviously it's it's healing focused. Andrew Wymack is going to be speaking with myself and Ashley. We are so excited. Every year we see amazing miracles at The Cure. So make sure you plan to attend that. We shall see you there. Amen. Awesome. Well, today I'm going to get into something that... Um, you know, some of you already know the answer to, and some of you maybe don't. But this is something very important. Does get God get does God glory in our sickness? You know, this is something that for many years, even as a believer, I was really raised to um, to to uh, to meditate on this and to to see this this activated in my life. 
that God is um, a God that is all powerful and all knowing and omnipotent and all controlling. And I just, you know, if this is maybe, maybe this is the first time that you're tuning in. Maybe this is the first time that you've, you've even seen me. I'm Carly Terides, nice to meet you. But, you know, this might be the first time that you've really, you've really heard me speak about this. And I want to challenge you a little bit because many of us have been brought up with this idea that God being God is all controlling. Now he is omnipotent, he is all knowing, he is all powerful, he is almighty, he is sovereign God in that, in that, um, in, in, in that uh, instance, right? But that's quite different from saying that tribute things to God that God didn't do. You know, they thought, they didn't understand about the enemy in the Old Testament. The enemy is really not, the devil is not mentioned v- hardly at all in the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament was a testament that is there for our learning, our interpretation, um, our, our history, right? But in, in, in some senses, it doesn't apply to us in the same way as that it applied to the authors that wrote it. You see, when Jesus died and rose again, he changed everything. And now we have a New Testament, or as it says in Hebrews, a new covenant, a new promise, a new agreement, a new con filled with the Holy Spirit in the same way that we're filled with the Holy Spirit today when we get born again. And this is really important to understand that a lot of the times the, the enemy was not mentioned in the Old Testament because the Old Testament saints, they had no authority over the enemy. Why would there be a lot written about somebody you have no authority over? Whereas in the New Testament, the devil, the enemy, the adversary, authority as believers over every work of the enemy, of which sickness is one of them. You know, one of Jesus' missions on earth, in fact, his main mission, he says, I have come for this purpose, to destroy the works of the enemy. He says that in John. Now, this is important because if Jesus' main mission when coming to earth was to destroy the works of the enemy, namely sickness and disease. If we look in the scriptures, we'll see that Jesus had a healing ministry. He went around healing the sick, raising the dead and casting out, casting out devils, casting out demons. That was his ministry. That was his purpose on earth to show believers that they are armed and dangerous, that they don't have to live, you know, as, as defenseless believers, but they are fully equipped now with the power of God, the armor of God on the inside of them. That should change how we pray. That should change how we approach the promises of God. That should change how we read the scriptures. Because some of the scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, do not apply to us as as New Testament, New Covenant believers, like they apply to the authors of those those works. So this is important that we... um, we understand this. Otherwise, we, you know, I believe this is, a, this is a plan of the enemy. He wants us to feel like we are poor and defenseless, weak and subject to everything in this world, just hoping to scrape by, just hoping to survive. And then when we die, we're going to get to heaven and all will be fine. That's the best, that's the best situation that we can hope for. Man, if that's true, that's kind of depressing. But that was the situation, that was the belief system that I had for so many years, even after I got born again, that because God was all powerful and in my mind, that meant all controlling. In a sense, it kind of took away any of the joy of praying because I felt like, well, God's mind is already made up. His mind's already, what's the point in praying if God's already mind made up? You can't change, you can't change the mind of God. Why, why pray if, if everything has already been set in motion? Anyway, what's the point? So when it came to, you know, healing, when it came to dealing with sickness and tragedy and trauma in my own life, the whole time that I believed that, I didn't resist the enemy, you know, because I figured, well, this must be God's will for me. It must be God's will for, for me to be sick. It must be God's will for, um, you know, our daughter to be sick. And, you know, you will not resist something that you have first embraced. If you really believe that God has set a part of course of action for your life that cannot be changed, that cannot be deviated, that it case Sarah, Sarah, whatever happens, whatever will be, will be, then, you know, I got to the point where I thought, well, what's the point in praying then? Because God's will is already made up and nothing that I can do is ever going to change that. We know, well, the problem with that is it's not true. 
It's not true. And there are so many believers that, that, like me, have swallowed that pill of deception. And therefore, when it comes to standing against things that nowadays, as a modern day believer, as a New Testament, a New Covenant believer, we actually have authority over, we fail to use our authority because we don't realize that we have it, because we don't appropriate and don't, um, don't approach the Word of God from a New Covenant perspective. This keeps people sick. This actually causes people to, to get to the point of death even when they, because they, they, they don't know any different. They don't know that there, there is something more powerful on the inside of them in the person of Jesus than there is in the world that is the enemy. And so they don't resist something that they have authority over. And you know, this whole phrase, well, you've got, and I've heard this so many times, God puts sickness on people for his glory. And, you know, we could go through and, and uh, we could ask for, for examples, and I'm sure people could name names here, we're not going to do that, of people that have said, that have believed that, well, you know, God's getting glory through my sickness. And, and I mean, there's, there's um, really quite elaborate um, testimonies that are available and, and, and prominent ministers even that testify to the to to this point that well I'm you know I'm in this wheelchair I'm sick and yet I'm you know I'm still believing God I'm still standing strong I'm I'm still firm in my faith because deep down I'm not resisting sickness because I believe that God put this on me and God is getting glory through me remaining sick now I have a number of issues with this because you know, it just doesn't match up. So I want to approach this, okay, from a scriptural perspective. This isn't about fighting from points of doctrine, but I truly believe that God wants us to see set to be set free from some of the things that we've also believed. And if what you're believing isn't producing life and health and peace and abundance in your life, then according to the scriptures, it's not from God. So if something isn't working in the way that you've been thinking, just be open-minded with me this afternoon. Let's get into the word and look, because sometimes what we have been thinking, what we take as do believe that God works, as it says in Romans, God works all things together for the good of those who love him according to his will, right? That does not mean, that's a very abused scripture, it does not mean that God sent a, a circumstance in the first place. It means that even in the middle of a seemingly negative circumstance, God can still bring something good out of it. Amen. But it doesn't mean that he's the author of that. And it's important to note the difference. Look at this. This is in John chapter 9. This is the healing of the man that was born blind. And it says here, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man that was blind from birth. So oftentimes, this belief system that God is somehow getting glory from us being sick, it stems from people that are, that are born in a particular way. You know, I do not believe that God creates defective physical bodies. I do believe that we are born into a fallen world. Since Adam and Eve, since the fall, when sin and sickness first entered the world, you know, when God created um, the world. He did not create sin. He did not create sickness because sickness is a fruit of the fall. It wasn't in the original creation, but to pervert God, try to pervert God's creation and sin and sickness into the world at the fall. Now, if God cre intended us for us to be born sick, he would, we would have seen that before the fall. The sickness would have been and deformity would have been present before the fall in Adam and Eve, in the original creation. It wasn't there in the beginning and it isn't supposed to be there now, right? That's important to understand. So this, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the, the question, does God um, get glory from my sickness. And we're looking here in John um, chapter 9, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, this is something that the enemy loves to do. They love, he loves to ascribe blame somewhere. He loves to ascribe blame for something that he is doing to the individual, the victim that he's doing it to. So he loves to get people into condemnation, into shame, um, into just unworthiness, 
into just thinking, well, this must be something that I'm doing wrong. This, this sickness must be my fault, you know. And Jesus answered these, these uh, people quite sternly. He says, neither this man or his parents have sinned, but it happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Now, this is where the misunderstanding happens. You know, there, there, this, he was saying that this sin, this blindness that this man was experiencing from birth, it wasn't the result of one person's individual sin. It was, you know, it, it, the, the, the cause of this blindness is because we're born into a fallen world, into the original sin of mankind, of Adam and Eve. But this blindness was not a result of an individual sin that had happened. This is really important because, you know, um, when, when we look at the scriptures, many of us are so sin conscious that, um, that this actually becomes a barrier between us and God. When we got born again, God doesn't want us to have any consciousness of sin. Now, that doesn't give us a license to go sin. I'm not saying that. God wants us to live a holy life, right? Holiness is a fruit of our relationship with him. You know, one of the ways that you can see somebody's salvation on the outside of them is the way they live their life. Um, there should be some evidence of that, right? But, but God wants us to be so far removed. We don't even have a sin nature anymore. When we got born again, now we become the righteousness of God in Christ. That sin doesn't even belong to us anymore. We've got the nature of God on the inside of us. So Jesus was saying to this man, you know, this sickness is not a result of an individual sin. It's a result, basically, of the sin of mankind. But it says here, but it happens so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Now, many people have taken this verse out of context. And this is the problem. My husband says this. When you take a verse out of context, all you're left with is a con. The danger is when people use the, the word of God, the scriptures, like some kind of buffet. You know, when you go and pick and choose bits and pieces that you want. This is a problem because when we do that and we take that one scripture out of the whole ministry of Jesus. Remember, Jesus' ministry was a healing ministry. He went around healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, saying, I only do what I see my father doing. And, and what I do pleases him. And, um, and so, you know, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, these are statements that Jesus made. And yet you want to take this one scripture on its own and say, oh, well, Jesus says, but it happened. This, this sickness, this blindness happened so that the works of God may dis be displayed in him. And they take that to interpret and interpret that to mean, well, God must have made him blind so that he could get glory from that blindness. No, that doesn't make sense with the whole ministry and the life and the mission of Jesus. You know, it is that he came to give us life and life more abundantly. It's the enemy that comes to kill, steal and destroy. It says in John 10, 10. But it says here, I must do the works of him who sent me while it is still day. Night is coming when no one can work. But while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus was displaying to people here, you know what? I, I'm over the world. I'm the light of the world and while I'm, I'm in, and I'm right now I'm in the world. I'm, the world is under my feet is, is what he was communicating here. And look at this. Look at what he does. This is very significant. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with, this, with his saliva and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Siloam means scent. And I'm over the world, right? I'm, I'm bringing the light, the truth into this world. He spits on the world. He literally demonstrates what he's talking about in the next verse. He spits on the world. He spits on the ground. And there's so many important things in here. You know, when God created Adam, he, he took the, the dirt of, of, the, of the ground and he breathed life into it. When Jesus healed this man, he took the dirt of the ground and he spat his own saliva into it. He put something of himself into that dirt. He was, this, is a, this is a mirror image of, of what happened at creation. Now also, you know, when, when somebody was to spit on somebody in those times, in Bible times, I think it's still offensive today to spit on people, but, you know, it was specifically seen as a curse. Now this, you know, Jesus was not cursing this man. That was not the point of it. But he was, he was cursing the ground. One of the results of the fall after, the, after Adam and Eve fell, after they believed the lies of the, of the serpent more than they believed the words of God, the promises of God, the ground became cursed. Thorns and, and, and uh, thistles grew up 
in the ground so that it was hard to till, it was hard to work. You know, there was labor that was involved. The, the ground became cursed. Jesus here, he's setting at right. He's destroying the very works of the enemy. He's picking up the dirt of the ground that was cursed as a result of the, of the fall. And he's putting himself into it. He is cursing the ground. He is rebuking that sickness, that power of the enemy and applying, is this anointing the eyes of the blind man with his clay. Now, this is really interesting that he would say to this man, go wash in the pool of Siloam, where this event occurred, was much closer to the pool of Bethesda, which is just right next to them. But he said specifically to this man, no, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is about three quarters of a mile, half a mile, three quarters of a mile away. Now think about this, the man was blind, still blind, and he had now had, you know, a mixture of saliva and clay stuck to his face. It must have been quite the spectacle. And yet Jesus says to him, go down to the pool of Siloam. I'm sending you there. I'm, he, the actual word means sent, the sent one, right? So sending, sending him, go wash in the pool. This man um, had not at this point shown any faith in Jesus whatsoever. You know, this is really important. Something happens. This man is passive. It was his, actually his disciples as they were walking by that said to Jesus, have you seen this man? Jesus approached this man. You might liken this a little bit to the story um, a couple of chapters later um, in the scriptures there where it talks about um, blind Bartimaeus. You know, blind Bartimaeus was also a blind, uh, a blind man sitting by the side of the road there. But Jesus didn't, you know, he didn't anoint him with, with clay and, and saliva. He didn't tell him to go and wash anywhere. And I wondered, why is this? Why is it that these situations, they seem quite similar, but Jesus treats these blind men quite differently? Well, I think the difference is the demonstration of faith, the response of faith that the men, um, that the, the men the act, act upon. You know, Jesus is, is encouraging these men to, he's provoking faith in them. Bartimaeus, he was the one that called out to Jesus. He was the one that heard for his voice. He was the one that responded to Jesus. He initiated the context. He initiated that conversation. So Jesus knew, oh, this man, he has faith to be healed. He has trust. He places his trust and his confidence in me. I can, I, can, I can work here. The power of God can flow. The power of God flows where there is faith, right? But this man, this man was passive. He didn't do anything. Jesus approached him. So this, this instruction was very important. If a man was willing to go and, and grope his way in the dark through three quarters of a mile through, through dusty streets and find a pool and wash in it, then you know that that's an act of faith. And sure enough, you know, you know, this man, he went and he washed in this pool and he returned seeing. And everybody knew this man. The neighbors knew this man. This was quite a, quite a spectacle that happened. You know, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't believe it. They were asking him over and over. So how was it that your eyes were open? How did this happen? They had literally never seen anything like this before. This was unique in this um, instance. And he, you know, he, he answered his neighbors and he said, well, a man called Jesus, he made clay, he anointed my eyes, he told me to go wash in this pool. So I did it and I received my sight. Now they're all, they're all trying to find out who is this Jesus. And immediately the Pharisees get involved is as they brought the man in verse 13, they brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees and they got all upset because it says it was a Sabbath day. And when Jesus made clay and opened his eyes, you know, the Pharisees were the keepers of the law. And they, but instead of the law um, being used to help people, remember the intention of the law was to put boundaries around people to keep them pure, to keep them safe from an enemy that they had no authority over. You see, uh, the, I see the law was almost like, um, uh, I, I like to think of it like this. We have um, dogs at home and we have one of those invisible fences. You know, we live out in the country and so we have an invisible fence and they have a little, a little device on their collar that, that, that gives them a little zap if they cross, they cross the invisible fence. And they know, oh, it's, you know, I've got up to the boundary. I need to go back home. I need to stay inside the boundaries. That's what the law is like. It's supposed to shock you. You get up to it. It's supposed to be there to protect you, to keep you safe from the power of the enemy. Because, you know, if you go outside of that law, you're at the mercy of the enemy, of which you are unprotected, to, uh, to you are defenseless. 
So the law is there to protect the, the innocent, to protect the defenseless from the power of an enemy in the Old Testament that they then had no authority over. But the problem is the same law that, um, that was there to protect them could also restrain them. It could also hurt them, right? It could be painful. And so the, the Pharisees, as keepers of the law, they were more interested in using the law as a way to control people than they were as a way to bless people. You could say they went by the letter of the law rather than the spirit of the law. The law is given out of, out of love and out of compassion by God to keep people to, alive long enough that he could send a Messiah to, to save them. But the Pharisees, they were so wrapped up with their, 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 their letter of the law and the control that it gave them that they completely overlooked that this man had been healed on a Sabbath day. And, uh, and so this was, a, this was a big issue for them. They wanted to keep the law of the Sabbath more than they wanted to see this man well. And they, they kind of exposed themselves here. Therefore, the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. He went on and he explained the whole story to them. They were very upset. They said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath day. They completely misunderstood what the purpose of the law was. But he goes on and they, they have this whole conversation. Well, who do you think he is? Is he a prophet? You know, and they, 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 they bring in the parents almost like, well, what do you think, parents? And they're like, well, I'd, I mean, you should ask the, the boy himself. You know, he's a grown man. Ask him yourself. They didn't want to get caught up in this, this trap of legalism. But look in verse 24, because I want you to see this. It says, so again, they asked the man who was blind and they said to him, give glory to God. He said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man, we know that this man is a sinner. And he said, I do not know if he's a sinner, but one thing I do know, they're talking about Jesus. I was born blind and now I see. You know, God did not get glory in that man's life of blindness. He got glory when that man was healed. And I want you to see this because people that have this deep down belief on the inside of them that God puts sickness on people so that he might get the glory out of it, they miss the last chapter in the story of their life where they receive their healing. God is not getting the glory in you being sick. God is getting the glory of you coming out from darkness and into light, from sickness into health. And if on the inside of us, we are convinced that God is, is putting sickness on people, that he is somehow getting glory from the sickness that is in our bodies or the sickness that is in our mind, we will never resist the enemy that is the true author of that and not God. And, and God won't get the glory of the healing that manifesting in your body. God gets gl has glory in his creation when it worships him. You know, our bodies were created to worship him. Our bodies were created to worship him, to give him glory. A body that is overcome with sickness is not, is not giving God the glory that he intended. His glory comes in you being free. Now, God can teach you things through sickness. I mean, lots of uh, whole chunks of my life, I was sick. I was sick to the point where I was hospitalized many times. And during those times, I had lots of opportunity to read the word. God showed me lots of things, but never once did he get glory from me taking the medication? Never once did he get glory from me suffering from a seizure. Never, not one time did he get glory from that. But he got glory when he, when, when he saw the revelation that he'd laid out for me play out in my life. That's, we were made to give glory. Your body was created to heal itself. That's where God gets the glory. This is so important. The glory came from the healing, not from the blindness. Don't let a, a false belief keep you from the last chapter of your story. Amen. The glory that he receives came, came at the end when this man testified, testified. Now, you know, this is another situation. I want to show you this. We're talking here today about people um, asking the question, does God get glory in me being sick? Well, look at this. This is another passage that people apply this um, this ideology to. He says, this is the death of Lazarus. This is just a couple of chapters later in the book of John in chapter 11. Now a man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany in the village of Mary and, the village of Mary and her um, sister Martha. Mary was anointed, uh, Mary who anointed the Lord with her ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick, right? 
These were good friends of Jesus. So the sisters sent word to him, to Jesus saying, Lord, um, he whom you love is sick. Lazarus, whom you love is sick. Then Jesus heard this. He said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Now look at this. Remember, if we take this in, in at face value, this one verse out of context, we're going to come to the wrong conclusion. He says, this sickness is not unto death, for the, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified by it. What he doesn't say is that God put that sickness on Lazarus, or that God is getting glory um, for him being sick or dying, right? You know, there's, Jesus knew that this sickness was going to turn around. He knew that this death was temporary. He knew that it was temporary. He says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. And so when he heard that he was sick, he remained where he was two more days. Now, this is very confusing. Jesus, if you know that the person that you love so so deeply is sick, why are you purposely going to hang on two more days and not rush on back to Bethlehem, Bethany rather, and pray for him? Because he knew that he knew the end of the story. We have to understand that, that Jesus knew things that we don't know. He, he saw things ahead of time that people in the moment didn't see. So if we, if we take a sound bite and we don't look at it in the context of his ministry, we're going to come to the wrong conclusion. He knew that God was going to get the glory from, from Lazarus's resurrection not from the sickness. He had already gone to the end of the story. He said, this sickness is not unto death. Well, he knew he was already going to die. Um, but the, the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now, let's go on down here. And he stays there a bit longer. And in verse 11, he says, he says to his disciples, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. He's fallen asleep is a term for, for death as well. He's fallen asleep. But I'm going that I may awaken him from sleep. You see, this was where the glory was going to be. And his disciples said, Lord, if he's sleeping, then he's going to be well. They didn't really understand what Jesus is saying, so he clarifies it. He says, Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of just rest, getting some rest through sleep. They didn't understand the gravity of this. So then Jesus clears it up and he says, no, Lazarus is dead, right? I said, for, you know, he's fallen asleep. What I meant was he's actually dead, plain English here. And I'm glad for your sakes, and this is really important, look at this. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Now, this is a curious statement, don't you think? What was Jesus really saying here? Well, I believe that Jesus was saying, it's good that I wasn't there when, when Lazarus was sick because otherwise I would have healed him and you would miss the opportunity to see somebody being raised from the dead. That's quite different, isn't it? Jesus was saying, I'm glad for your sakes I was not there while he was going through this journey of sickness because otherwise I would have intervened. Jesus never once stood by and saw somebody that, it, that, was, that was close by to him suffering and said, you know what, you need to wait. You need to actually follow this thing through to death because then you're gonna, you know, it's all going to be right on the other side of heaven. He never said that to anyone. He never stood by and watched sickness and disease tear people up and did nothing about them. He was not a passive Messiah. He hated the works of the enemy with such a passion that he, he chased people down. He pursued people. He provoked people to believe him. He desperately wants you to be well today. He would not have been able to stand by being in the same room as a dying Lazarus and done nothing, to, done nothing about it, just letting Lazarus suffer in front of him. No, he's saying, I would have, I would have done something. I'm glad for your sakes I was not there so that, so that you may believe. This was going to be a teachable moment for the disciples that even death had no power over Jesus. Even death was no match for, for, um, for the goodness of God. And so it says here, he, he says, and then Thomas said to his disciples, let us go that we may all die with him. The disciples, they didn't really get it either. So, so don't feel bad, right? But he goes on down there. He arrives there. And, and by this point, you know, Lazarus has been in the tomb four days. A long time. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, less than two miles away. It wasn't a big journey. Right? It wasn't far away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them during their 
concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained at the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She knew that fact. She knew that fact that if Jesus had been in the room with Lazarus, he wouldn't have waited till he was dead. He would have healed him while he was still sick, but alive. But she says, but even now I know that whatever you may ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus says to her, your brother will rise again. Now he says, I am the resurrection and the life who believes in me, though he may die, yet he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He's asking her, do you believe this right now? Can you see beyond the circumstances of sickness and disease? If you have grown up believing that God is somehow getting glory in your sickness, I'm going to challenge you. Can you believe something different today? Can you look at the word of God today and let the word of God change your mind? Because right here, Jesus is asking the same question. And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ. You are the son of God who has come into the world and over the world. Now, this is a fascinating, fascinating instance here. You know, Jesus, he weeps. He he, hears that Lazarus is is dead and he he weeps. And, you know, that's actually the shortest verse in the Bible is uh, John 11, 35. Jesus wept. Shortest verse in the Bible. But it says he groaned in the spirit. He, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Where have you laid him? He said, Lord, come and see. And, it, you know, when he says he groaned in the spirit there in verse 33, you know, this is an interesting word, interesting word in, the, in the Greek that I can't pronounce, but it means to snort with anger, to snort with when groaning in the spirit. It says he was stirred up with anger. You know, we think he groaning in the spirit just means, well, he's just praying in tongues. No, groaning in the spirit. His spirit was moved. It was disturbed. It was angered on the inside. What was he angry about? He was angry because the enemy had afflicted somebody that he loved. He was angry because he saw the pain and the destruction of the enemy in God's creation. The pain and the destruction of the destruction of the enemy in people that he loved and that he came to see. He saw them weeping. He felt compassion for them. That you know he 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 wept with those who wept. But he was angry at the enemy. And it says he was he was troubled. That word troubled it means to to be stirred up. He was moved by this. You know, when we see people that are suffering with with sickness and disease, we should be angry too. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, a human kind of anger. I'm talking about a righteous anger. We need to hate sickness and hate disease with the same passion that we hate sin because it's destructive, because it is a fruit of the enemy that comes against us to, to kill, steal and destroy. You know, sickness and disease is always from the enemy and it only has one assignment. That is to, to kill, to steal and destroy. That, that, that's its, its whole plan. And Jesus is angry about this. It says, they came to him, Lord, and see, Jesus wept. And then it says, then the Jews, uh, the Jews were coming and they were saying, look, see even how he loved him. Now go down into verse 38, a couple of verses down. It says, then Jesus again groaning within himself and it says in the new living translation of john eleven thirty eight, 38 it says jesus you know he arrived at the tomb it says jesus was still angry when he arrived at the tomb i like that he was angry and he he hadn't stopped being angry we need to let that anger that's right don't let the sun go down on your ang- on your wrath be angry and do not sin those scriptures there in to are not used for people that, that was, they were used to be directed at the things that the enemy is trying to do in our life. And, but Jesus, he says here, you know, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Um, obviously, he's been dead a long time. They said there's going, to be, there's going to be a smell. But Jesus says to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see what? The glory of God. The glory of God. See, there wasn't any glory in Lazarus being sick. There wasn't any glory in him in him dying and, and being buried. The glory was about to come. The glory was in the resurrection. Look at this. They took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and his father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. Do you know this is the same for you? The Lord always hears you. He always hears you. 
But because of the people, these people standing around, they're talking about the Jews that were coming, the, the naysayers and everyone else. I, I, I said this, that they might believe that you sent me. Because of the people standing around, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And he says with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth, come out. And he, he says, he who was dead came out, his hands and his feet with, wrapped with grave clothes, his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. You know, the Jews saw this and immediately started to plot Jesus' arrest and, and execution. They knew that they had seen the Messiah and they couldn't stand to let go of their grip on control. Man, the enemy does not want us to be free. He does not want you to be free in your thinking. He does not want you to be free in your mind. And he certainly doesn't want you to be free in your flesh, in your body, in, in your strength. But you know, if we can lay aside our preconceived judgments, our past experiences sometimes, and say, Lord, I'm going to take you at your word. I'm going to believe that you have good for me. I might not understand it all, but I believe it. I don't have to understand everything to believe that it's good and it's for me. Healing is for you today. God does not get glory in sickness. He gets glory in your resurrection. He gets glory not when you not when you resurrected in heaven, no, but he gets glory in the resurrection of your life today. You do not have to wait to receive your healing until you get to heaven. You can have it right now. It is God's will for your life. As much as he wanted that blind man to see, and he wanted Lazarus to live. He wants you to see and live today. Amen. And so I know that we have on here a whole army of people that are ready to believe, that are ready to receive. God is not willing that one of us should perish. He doesn't want us to be sick. He doesn't want us to suffer. You know, Trevor, this is a good question. He says, um, if Jesus, why do some people get healed and some people don't? Or some people suffer for many years, like 20 years. You know, there are so many variables in this. But one, I'm, and I've just touched on one of, the, one of the belief systems today that keeps people from receiving healing. And that is the belief that God is somehow the author of it. If people have a belief system that they think that God is getting glory in their sickness, that he caused it in the first place, or that he is trying to teach them something through it, and he, for whatever reason he wants them to stay sick, then they will remain in sickness. And that is a reason why some believers... Um, even after receiving salvation, even after receiving the healer on the inside of them, continue to live in sickness because they have some things in their thinking that have become strongholds that literally hold them back, hold them ca in captivity, and, and they aren't able to, be, uh, to walk in freedom. Now, here's the thing. You know, when we renew our mind to what the Word of God actually says, read the scriptures like we've read today and we allow those things to become our truth, then our faith starts to become effective. You know, we do not lack in the faith department. We have the faith of the Son of God on the inside of us. That's more than enough faith to raise the dead, to heal the sick or cast out any devil in hell. More, more than enough faith, right? The very same faith that raised Jesus from the dead is, is the same faith, the same power that will quicken, that will bring life to our mortal bodies. But oftentimes, it's our thinking, our wrong thinking that holds us back and holds us in captivity. So Trevor, you know, there's, there's a whole lot in that, a whole lot of reasons. But I hope that helps you. You know, God does not want us to be sick. He doesn't want us to be sick. But sometimes our thinking keeps us there. It keeps us in captivity. It is the enemy that is the author of sickness and disease. But Jesus, he came to give us life and life more abundantly. And as we renew our mind to the word of God, we'll start to change our mind about things. And that faith that's on the inside of us will start to become effective. You know, in Philemon verse 6, it says that your faith becomes effective by the acknowledgement. That, mean, that means that the recognition and the, and the thankfulness of every good thing that Christ has, has done in you. Every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus, your faith becomes effective. Man, that's so powerful. As we start to recognize and acknowledge and give thanks for every good thing that God has put on the inside of us in the person of Jesus, that faith starts to come alive. That trust, that boldness starts to grab a hold. We start to see that resurrection power flowing through us from our mind and then into our flesh. We start to see healing manifest. 
There's so much more to be said about this. I would encourage you, if you have never checked out Power Academy, you know, we have um, a free Bible school. Just need your email to sign up. Go on there. That is on Power Academy. That is where you'll find my most extensive teaching on healing. Hours and hours and hours. There's three whole modules on there of healing. And we go through, we break these things down very carefully, very carefully. And so I want you to go in there and look at that because it's really going to help you. Brenda says, people in my Bible study always say that God's way is higher than ours and he's all powerful. So we need to be careful not to give people false hope. You see, here's the thing. It would be false hope if it wasn't true. But of all, all people, we should be the most hope-filled. Amen. Because we have a hope in Jesus that doesn't disappoint. And, you know, people, it is true. God's ways are higher than our ways. But, but then also the rest of that verse that says that says that we have been given the mind of Christ. We can know his thoughts. He will share them with us. We, we, and this is the danger when people take snippets of the Bible, I call it the buffet Bible, little bits, oh, I like the dessert, but I don't like the, I don't like the entree. You know, I like the, I like the starting bit, but I don't want to get too much into the meat of things. You know, when people pick and choose just odds and ends of verses like we've shown today, but they don't put it in context, they're not going to get a full understanding of the scripture. So when we come, when it comes to healing, we have to approach healing from a new covenant perspective. We have to look at the whole life of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, the words that he said and the commission that he's given us. And once we start to do that, Power Academy is a great place to learn about that. You'll start to clarify some of those misunderstandings of the sovereignty of God that has kept many people literally in bondage, many people from walking out the abundant life that God, that, that Jesus paid for us to have. Amen. So the enemy, here's the deal. The enemy knows the scripture sometimes better than we do. And that is a problem because he uses scripture against us. Little bits of pieces here and there, twisted and taken out of context. He'll use it like the Pharisees used the law here with, it, with enough truth to be believable, but also enough lies to, to be bondage. So um, it's the truth that sets us free. Amen. So go on over. Make sure you, you check out Power Academy, learn.terrydisministries.com, and that will really help you. There's lots of teachers on there. It is free, and that is a great place to do a Bible study. Personally, I would not be a part of, of studying um, scriptures with people that, that, that want to fight with me, right? Um, Jesus never fought with people um, but he, he was there with people that had questions that wanted to learn. So just be careful what kind of environment you're in, especially if you're believing for healing for yourself. Amen. So right now, um, there's something that I want to do. I want to get to praying for your prayer request, but I have a couple of testimonies I want to read before I do to encourage you. This one's from a Kristen Summer. Kristen is a partner, graduated boot camp round five in the summer last year, and she sent the doctor's report to confirm um, that she has no evidence of disease um, of cancer in her body. In November, it says the PET scan revealed cancer in the neck, the right breast, the lymph nodes, both left and right, her liver, both lungs, diaphragm, adrenal glands, bone, cervical, thoracic, lumbar spine, sternum, ribs, right scapula, pelvis and right femur she had literally what she's saying is she had cancer everywhere in her body all through her body but in september she said i had another pet scan and the the the, the, the findings came in she's had com a near complete resolution throughout her body no evidence of disease of cancer in her body i love that congratulations Kristen. i'm telling you you are a trophy to God's goodness. He is getting glory in that report. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. Ingrid says, on Christmas Day, December 25th, I was sick, laying in bed, crying out to the Lord. Lord, it's a day of celebration, but here I am, Lord, sick in bed. Free me, Lord, I pray, from the bondage of sickness. My phone rang, and it was a call, it was a call from Carly and Ashley, praying for me. You were an answer to prayer. Only God could answer that so quickly. That's, no, that's awesome. That was our robocall. You need to be part of our robocalls that go out there. Those are powerful. We do those every now and again, and we pray for people, and we send the prayers out. So you want to make sure that you, um, that you get to be on that phone list, right? But right now, let's begin to pray. Father God, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters here. Lord, I thank you for the people that are watching, the people that are listening here live or, or later on the replay. Lord, I thank you that it is your will for them to receive. Lord, I thank you that your, your will is already made up. 
is already made up regarding uh, regarding their wholeness. And right now we take authority over every lie of the enemy that has been manipulating their bodies. We take authority over cancer in Jesus' name. We command, um, Sonny, we command that cancer to leave uh, your uterus in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that your power on the inside of these believers is greater than the enemy that's trying to manifest in their body. Right now, we command that sickness, that disease, that cancer, that irritation, that infection, that ringing to leave, that blurriness to leave their bodies in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We command that infection to go. Thank you, Lord. We command the cancer in the bile duct to leave Muriel's body. We command Barbara's kidneys to function as they should and be connected to her bladder in the way that it was supposed to be. We command new cells to grow, new blood vessels to grow, new, new nerves and tendons to grow in Barbara's body, reconnecting everything that has been disconnected in Jesus' name. We speak the restoration of Sarah's teeth. We command peace in Graver Johansson's body. In Jesus' name, peace that drives out fear. Thank you, Lord. We command sinus infection to leave Jewel right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 We command Kobe. We take authority over those cortisol levels and adrenal glands, and we command them to function as they should, that your levels... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for strong voices, for strong vocal cords, for inflammation in the throat to leave, for ringing um, in the ears to leave, for, for hearing to come back, for eyes to see in Jesus' name. Somebody, you have a pain in your foot that runs and shoots right through your big toe, the large toe. Right now, we command that pain to leave. We command those bones to straighten, those nerves to be whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, there are people all over that have had issues with sinuses and, and um, inflammation of soft tissue linings in their bodies, whether that's in their gut or in their sinuses. But I see a lot of inflammation in the soft tissue. Right now, we command that inflammation to go down. We command this fluid that's being retained and swelling, we command that to be loosed from your body in Jesus' name. Pain under the left breast and back, leave right now, right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We command hormones to be balanced and acid reflux to leave in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you know everything that, that ails us. You know everything that's disturbing us. Somebody's, um, you're very restless um, in the evening times, very restless in bed. I see that the, 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 the shaking in your legs. Right now, I command peace throughout your body. I command your, your hormone levels to balance as they should. In Jesus' name, we command that, that, con, that, uh, that, that, that nervous condition to be at peace in your body. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Right now, brains, eyes, sinuses, teeth. Thank you, Lord. Lungs, bladder. Amanda, right, right now, we just declare wholeness over you. In Jesus' name, every lying symptom to leave your body in the name of Jesus. Some people are actually dealing, the Holy Spirit showing me this, this is a demonic attack. You've had uh, multiple different things that really, uh, they seem unconnected. Um, you'll ha you know, you can have a problem with your foot and a problem with your lung, right? I mean, these, these, there's always something. You just came to collect these things. You know, this is not a coincidence. You are not made to be decrepit. You are not made to wear out, to, uh, to give up. To, to have all these different things randomly starting in your body. You are not created that way. This is an attack of the enemy. They call this a spirit of infirmity. Now, right now, I take authority over that in your body and I command it to leave, stop hiding and come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmity, leave your body right now. Thank you, Lord. I take authority over organ function. Organs function as you were created to be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Every level, every organ, every muscle, tissue, sinew in your body functioning as it was created to be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I see somebody, you have a stoma because you've had 
uh, parts of your body removed. Right now, we command those to grow back. I don't know how all this works. I just know that I believe in a God that does creative things. He's a creative God. We command everything that's been removed from your body to be restored to you whole. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Sheena, because there's an infection around a wound. Uh, right now, we command that infection to leave and that wound to close in Jesus' name supernatural growth of healthy flesh. We command the necrosis to stop, to repent in Jesus' name. Thank you. Some of you have an, an issue with circulation. There are literally parts of your body that have not had circulation and they have died. Part, I see somebody who had a heart attack and part of your heart, it shows up on when they do those scans that there's part of the heart muscle that is just not receiving blood. It's literally died. Right now, we command your heart muscle to come back to life in Jesus' name. We command um, those parts of the body that have been cut off from circulation by cancer right now, to, to cancer to die and the circulation to be restored in you in Jesus' name. Parts of the brain that have been cut off, that haven't received oxygen, that, are, that, that have died right now. I speak resurrection over the, those brain parts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Kishina Basuri Anamienda. We command life back into your nervous system. There's a, there's a separation. Uh, there's some sort of condition uh, that happens over years. And uh, it's like your spinal cord is liquefying. I don't know how else. I just see like a jelly, like a liquefying of, um, of your spinal cord that... And, and, and all kinds of things have been spoken over to you that you, it's, it's, there's going to be paralysis in your future. You're going to lose this ability. You're going to lose that ability. Right now, in Jesus' name, we break that lie. We break that assignment in Jesus' name. I speak over your spinal cord and I command wholeness over it. I command regeneration over you. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, regeneration of nerves, of skin, of bone, of tissue in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for cells coming back to life, cells that produce enzymes that have, that have died off, come back to life right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for glands that have been removed, that are growing back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for new abilities in the body, things that have, have stopped happening. There's parts, body parts that have stopped producing. Right now, I speak life into them. I command production to start again. Production in the cell. Oh, somebody has a mitochondrial disease. And it affects so many different parts of your body. These are the small parts of the cells in the body that produce. It's the powerhouse cells. Right now, we command your mitochondria to function and to release energy in Jesus' name. Mitochondria, mitochondrial diseases right now. We take authority over you in the Jesus' name and we command you to repent, to turn around. We command every cell in your body to respond to the word of God. You are whole, you are healed, you are healthy in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There's chronic pain, fibromyalgia pain. The Lord's relieving you of that right now chronic pain um, throughout the body. Somebody actually has a syndrome uh, of pain. It's like a, a, a chronic pain syndrome. I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it's, it's, it's a syndrome in your body that, that literally causes your nerves to fire. They're like they're on fire all the time. It, it, the skin is even painful. Right now, we command that, 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 that situation, that condition to leave your body. Bend. There's somebody, you have a, a stiffness in your knees where you can't bend them. The Lord's healing your knees right now. There is mobility. There is movement that's coming back to your knees, that stiffness in the joints where they literally, you'd have to force them to bend them. Right now, I command them to move, to be loosed. There's scar tissue in those joints that is being broken down. Where there's a range of motion that is coming back to you right now, where there's been scarring that is literally binding up joints Run now, we command that, 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 that scarring to leave in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, that's right. That, that pain in the face to leave right now. 
Leave right now. Pain in the face. Rest. Oh, there you go. Restless legs. I had a word for that earlier. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I speak a reset to somebody's endocrine system. It's being reset, recalibrated right now in your endocrine system. Yes, thumb joint move in the name of Jesus. Moles and skin tags dissolve and fall off right now. Fall off in Jesus' name. She and I, you know, we had somebody uh, a couple of weeks ago got their sense of smell right back, right back. We, we command those senses to be returned to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Somebody has a, a blockage at the top of their nose, actually, that uh, you have obstructive breathing, a, a chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary dis, uh, disease, chronic COPD, and then you have a problem with, the, with the, your nose as well, with the passages closed, and then you have sleep apnea. Right now, we command those airways to open up, those lungs to open up in Jesus' name. Um, for somebody, you have a, it's an issue actually with the, your structural condition with the, the, your nasal cavity, and it's very small. And, and um, it, the way that the cartilage has been formed in your sinuses and in your nasal cavities and even in your, your hearing, your cavities, um, your, your, your structure of those cavities is too narrow and it causes um, hearing loss. It causes problems with breathing. Right now, we command those bone, that bone structure to be widened in Jesus' name. We command that cartilage to be recreated as it should. That space, those sinus cavities to be recreated as they should. Widened in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, right now, oh, Oli, we command your digestion to be at peace in Jesus' name. Kobe, we just speak the, the, just the comforter over you. The comforter over you. Thank you, Lord, for being with Kobe's family and walking them through this to a place of peace and victory. Thank you, Lord. Wendy, Right now, listen, we just read a testimony of somebody that had cancer all through their body and there's not there now. And that testimony is going to be your testimony, Wendy. That's just for you right now. Let it be unto you according to the word, according to your faith in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We curse cancer in Wendy's body. Every single part of it shrivel up and leave. Shrivel up and leave. Thank you, Lord. Kishina basuri anamienta. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now we speak healing over Amy's body. Kishina Basul. We command it to flow through her. Kirada from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Every single piece of it, every single part of it that's hers, Lord, be restored to her in Jesus' name. Movement restored, pain leave, energy come back to her. Thank you, Lord. Restful sleep. Thank you, Lord. Kishina Basuri Anamienda. Uh, Dave says he has his knee replaced since only bit nine. I'm believing you're getting more degrees, more motion in Jesus' name. That's right. Cancer cannot live in your body and survive. It has no right to remain. No right to remain in Jesus' name. Thank you. See somebody, you have an enlarged tongue. And it actually has pro causes problems uh, with speech, with swallowing, with eating. But there's an enlarged tongue. It might be a cancer of the tongue, actually. Uh, but right now, I command that tongue to go down into a normal shape, normal size, and that cancer to die in Jesus' name. That's right. All of those cysts and lumps and bumps go right now. Leave in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's had a problem with fungus under their nails. Right now, we curse that fungus in the nail beds. We command health and strength in your nails in Jesus' name. That, you know, I see the Lord filling in gaps in somebody's um, cornea right now. There's been pitting in the lens of your eye in the cornea, like a abrasions, corneal abrasions. Right now, they're being restored. They're being filled in. Clarity coming back to those corneas. No cloudiness, no, no abrasions, just clear like glass. Thank you, Lord, for, for restoring those corneas in Jesus' name. Sight coming back to you. 
sight coming back to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything in those eyes working as they should, the retinas to, to be attached in the right place, the tear ducts to be flowing. Somebody, you keep having recurring cysts and they're kind of inside your eye, inside the eyelid right there, um, and, and styes, but they're, they're very painful. Um, I, I forget the name. It's like a, it looks like it begins with a C. It's like a it's, there's a name for it. But anyway, right now, I command those things to leave your body and never to return. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, there's, there's issues with, um, with all kinds of different things of people sleeping is what I'm seeing. Sleeping and breathing and reacting with the environment. Right now, I turn allergies off in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Allergies be switched off right now. Your, your immune system is responding to things in a hyperactive way. It's going overboard. It sees everything at, in, the, in the environment or everything that you eat or touch come in contact with as a foreign body. And it's trying to protect you, but it's doing too much and it's causing problems. Right now, I speak peace to your immune system. Peace over you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say stop overreacting. Lungs, airways, open up in the name of Jesus. Somebody you have a real problem with going from a cold environment to a hot environment. Like if you walk from outside into, in, into the inside. And um, it's like your body cannot adjust to the, to the temperature. There's also an issue I see with somebody's uh, liver, an enlarged liver. Right now, whatever is the root cause of that, we command it to stop it. Stop it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We command that liver, that, that, those liver to go back to the normal size, your liver enzymes to, to be normal in Jesus' name, your body temperature to regulate. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is an issue, um, there is an issue with a, a, a gland in the brain that isn't functioning as it should. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's something to do with growth hormones as well. And the pituitary gland. Right now, we command full functionality of your pituitary gland in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Right now, um, God loves I see you're in a crisis right there. Lord, I thank you for sending angels to surround her. I thank you, I thank you Lord, for sending somebody to help. We see, we sending, sending a good Samaritan to pr protect them and provide for them. Lord, I thank you that your provision goes before them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for people coming, laborers coming across our path. Seth, right now, yes, baseline normal in Jesus' name. Baseline is normal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We command those, we command those things that have come against you to cease and desist in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you love us, that you're with us, that you care for us, that you provide for us. And we have Yvonne here says, Mum had breast, she's having a breast operation on Monday. Right, right now we command that that cancer to leave your your mum's body, Yvonne, to leave. We command it to shrivel up and die in Jesus' name. We declare over her a good report that that thing that they think is, is so bad, when they go to examine her on Monday, they'll be like, I don't know what is going on, but something has changed. Something has changed in your body and, and we don't find, we, we just declare over her no evidence of disease found in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for bringing strength back to our bodies, strength back to our muscles right now. Strength back to our muscles in Jesus' name. Thank Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that, that you provide for us. Thank you, Lord, that you make those things that are out of whack come back into order in Jesus' name. There's, there is a strengthening happening of muscles, uh, particularly muscles that are struggling to contract. Right now, I, can, I speak strength over those muscles in Jesus' name. Function as you should. Function as you should. Thank you, Lord. Abraham, right now, whatever it is that's coming against you, I mean, well, I tell you what, it might be unexplained to us, but you know, the ultimate root is the enemy. So right now, in Jesus' name, I command the enemy to leave Abraham's body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, for every lying symptom to leave right now. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God is so good for us, to, so good to us. He's got so, so many good things for us. I want to encourage you. We have our prayer lines that are open. Our phone ministers are standing by. You can call them right now, 719-633-44. They are standing by, ready to take your call and to continue ministering to you. But also... Understand this, we pray for you every day and um, you can carry on ministering one to another over on our platform Underground. That is our own um, uh, social media platform. I would encourage you to go on over there and become a part of that because it's powerful. There's loads of ministry that goes on over there and it is super powerful. I know that there are many people that are receiving right now and I'd encourage you, go ahead and check yourself. Do something that you couldn't do before. The power of God is right now, right here moving and, 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 and working things out for your good. He's, what, he's changing things. If you believed and received on the inside of your body, I'm telling you, there are things that are changing. So make sure you tell us your testimony so we can read them out next time as well. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, there's many people that are receiving in their bodies physical healing. Thank you, Lord, for manifestations of healing. We, God is getting the glory. We give you all the glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, listen. Let me just say this anywhere um, that you want. You just go to our website. You put this teaching, the download version of Against All Odds in your cart, and you put in the code Terry Diz, uh, TV. I think, let me make sure I've got that right. I think it's in my notes. And it will make the price zero for you. My phone has decided to, to not be useful. That's very helpful. Um, but, you know, here we go. It's come. Oh, no, go back to life. Here we go. The code for this free teaching is... Yes, here it is. Teridez TV. That's the coupon code, all capitals. Teridez TV. And so you can go in there and you can get that teaching for free. And so we want to we wanna make sure that that's available to you wherever it is. Our partners have already um, made that possible for you. It's an MP3 download, so you can get that anywhere. And you go, that's right, you go to the shop and you use the coupon code terridoz.tv and you put that in what is in your cart in the shop. And then it will zero out the price and you can download it, right? So that's there for you. Make that available because if you need to see some victory in your life, you're going to need some help sometimes, someone to encourage you through things. And that teaching is really going to help you to start to see the victor that's on the inside of you. Uh, While well, that's awesome, that, um, uh, Chimika is saying that Jesus, my sight, is, all, is, is better now. Praise God. Amen. They're receiving their healing. Praise Jesus. So um, keep on sending your testimonies in. We love to hear. We love to share them uh, next week as well. And again, thank you to our partners and friends. We love you. N on Tuesday next week, um, Ash is going to be doing his uh, Business Supernaturally live stream. Don't forget to, to mi um, miss out. Don't, don't forget to miss out on that. No, no, don't miss that. Don't forget that and miss out on it is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Don't miss it. Tune in on Tuesday for that. Um, that will be powerful and you will bless. And yes, I'll be doing Power Hour again um, next week as well. I'm going to be in a different location because I'm going to be traveling, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there praying for your prayer request as normal on Thursday. Amen. So make sure you join us. We love you. Ashley says hello and thank and thank you. And we will join. We will see you again, hopefully at one of our events. Make sure you join us at one of our events. We'd love to see you there. Until next time, goodbye.